I cancelled the wedding without any hesitation after finding out about the fiancé's affair. My story, at the onset, is your typical infidelity discovery. M27, engaged for six months, fiancé acting distance, gone at weird times, closeness and frequent and excuses. Found the texts. She'd been cheating with a guy, married, with kids. Took pics of all of them. This douchebag was coaching my fiancé on having affairs. He's been doing it off and on for years. Like it's acceptable. And yes, it's in the texts. Here's my success story. This transpired late spring. Wedding was planned this summer. Zero hesitation, was no way this was going happen. I was done. I work for a huge company. Position openings galore right now. Interviewed and secured a position in a place I always wanted to live. Gave notice to my landlord. Fiancé lived with me. Lease entirely in my name. Filed unlawful detainer. Got a new phone plan and new number. Plan was to end relationship on a Thursday. My last day in apartment was Friday. Movers scheduled. Impeccable timing. She had a girl's weekend getaway planned that weekend. Arranged to have sheriff at my place for four hours, cost me $200. We can hire off duty in my county. What transpired that Thursday? FedEx screenshots to her parents and AP's wife. Both with respectable notes. Her parents were out a lot of money having to cancel wedding with short notice. Felt bad, eh, not really. Turned old cell phone service off. Met with deputy, explained situation. Presented court documents. Dude was cool. She came home from work. Told her we were done. She needed to pack and leave. No explanation. Just that I was not ready to be married. Of course she was a mess. Deputy moved it along. Took a few hours. Tears transitioned to anger. That evening, blocked her on everything. Was on the road by Friday afternoon. It's almost three months now. The new job, new scenery, meeting new people. Have been in sea with most everyone. Mutual friends tell me she is not doing well. The ones I keep in contact with now know the story. Her parents contacted my parents and apologized. They asked for my information but my dad declined to share. He did tell me to call them. I may out of respect. Her sister, who I failed to block, messaged me on FB. Wrote she understood why, but felt I could have handled better. Update. Many have made comments regarding my ex fiancés sister's PM comment. I honestly always felt her comment was based on how I handled things with her parents. After reading your comments, I now see she may have meant how I handled it with my ex as well. During my long drive and days after I felt really cowardly. Felt like I was running from my ex by not confronting her with the truth. I honestly just didn't want to deal with it, felt it would do no good and really did just want to get away. Your comments now make me feel good about what I did. I plan to contact her parents soon. Need to just find a phone and privacy. Not sure what to say exactly. Regarding the texts between X and AP. I had 12 pics of the text string so a lot. Also a few pics incriminating. There was no doubt they was doing it. The comments he made that aggravated me pertain to unjustifying cheating everyone I know, men and women, have at some point, had someone on the side. Guaranteed your BF has cheated, or will. All guys do it. We are no programmed to be monogamous. My marriage is better because I don't have to put everything on my wife. The comments my ex made that were upsetting I enjoyed our time the other day, I just need to get more comfortable, it just takes a couple times. I am just nervous. Not being with you. It's great. Just do not want him to find out. Ever. I'm pretty sure he cheated on me before. For the record, I never cheated on her. I never contacted the AP's wife. Both letters and screenshots were sent FedEx. Tracking shows they delivered. That's all I have. Part of me wants to contact her, 
Part of me thinks with what I sent there's no way he can weasel out of this unless she's in complete denial, in which case it's pointless. I talked to a few mutual friends. They brought her up. All I gather is she's not doing well whatever that means. I really do not want to get into discussions about her so I changed the subject. I live in a really cool apartment complex. A lot of people my age and met a bunch. Also have a lot of friends from work. Social life is pretty good. Update. As I wrote earlier, based on most everyone's advice, I reached out to my ex's parents. I spoke only to my father-in-law. Good conversation. I took the apology approach. What I mean is, I told him I was sorry to have sent him the pics of messages, etc. I just said I respected them and needed them to understand exactly why I made my decision. He brushed all of that aside and was more curious about how I was doing, my new job, etc. Gave me a lot of words of encouragement, etc. We did not discuss my ex. He did not volunteer anything and I did not ask. I did end up talking to a friend from where I used to live. Sounds like X moved back home and quit her job. Also, ashamed to admit, did a little Facebook stalking AP's wife. Thinking she received what I sent. Based on her Facebook posts around the time I sent the pics, there were a lot of motivational memes with a lot of supporting comments which lead me to believe she's leaving him? Can't be certain, but not a lot of this type of posts prior. Really enjoying my new job and making new friends every week. Not ready to date, but feeling good about meeting someone when the time is right. Update. Had a lot of questions regarding how I was able to manage the breakup with my ex. I appreciate everyone's thoughts and support. Not the greatest writer. Kept my post history up for background. Please understand that I discovered her cheating well before I left. No question those days right after discovery were, and still are a blur. I couldn't eat, couldn't concentrate at work, couldn't sleep. Could barely function. Trust me, I really struggled with not confronting her. I guess what was pivotal was an evening when she was very late coming home. Of course, pretty certain she was with him. Observing her just go on like any other day, being nice, asking about me etc. and knowing the whole time it's a sham was just a slap in the face. I do not know how to describe it, but she went from my one and only to not if she were the last woman on earth. Obviously I was not myself and I guess she could sense that. There were a few times where she was especially affectionate and very concerned i.e. you okay, something wrong, etc. Very hard to fake being okay when clearly not. Adding to my disdain, she was perfectly okay with no love. Of course I did not initiate. Neither did she, thank God. That also helped solidify my decision. During the actual breakup. Very nerve-wracking. The cop was very helpful. Gave him enough of my story to garner some sympathy. At least it felt that way. He coached me to say very little and he ensured me he would move things along. Again, I was pretty much done at this point. Just wanted to get it over with more than anything. The officer was extremely sympathetic to her and kind, but assertive. I'm sure he dealt with worse. No doubt, he knew what he was doing. I spent the bulk of the time on the balcony pretending to play with my phone back turned. The cop was talking to her the whole time I could barely hear. Wife was shocked when doctors said her terminal illness is caused by an STD and knew she's in trouble, but kept lying until karma did it. My wife and I met in early 2004. I was 27, she was 25. She was gorgeous and had a youthful innocence about her. She turned heads everywhere we went. She also seemed genuinely kind and came from what appeared on the surface to be a great family. However, I had to learn the hard way that her beauty was only skin deep. We had a great relationship the first six months, but then red flags started to appear I ignored them. Later in 2004, she got pregnant, mine, confirmed years later, but began withholding intimacy. She said it would get better and that it was just a phase because of the pregnancy. I believed her and proposed just before our daughter was born in May 2005. We married in 2006, still not having resolved the intimacy issues. She withheld intimacy throughout the marriage, even on the honeymoon. 
She continued to withhold intimacy, maybe once every six months, through the first three years of our marriage. The stress for me was unbearable. She did decide to have sex with me one time, however, finally initiating after a six-month dry spell. She conveniently told me as I climaxed that she had forgotten to take her pill. Welcome our son in May 2009. Later that year, we were shocked when she was diagnosed with head and neck cancer after finding lumps on her neck. After lots of treatment and scans however, the doctors told us in 2011 that they had misdiagnosed her cancer and that it was, in fact, cervical cancer caused by an STD, HPV. Knowing how little we had sex and that I hadn't been with anyone since before I met her, this was a red flag I couldn't ignore. I snooped on her phone and email and found a trove of emails and texts showing she had numerous affairs starting just months after we got together, leading up to and all the way through the wedding, then throughout the marriage up until her diagnosis. There were texts that indicated she didn't even know whose child our daughter was. Then, more messages indicated she had aborted another person's child just a couple of months after our wedding, one that she had told me and her family was a miscarriage. Worst of all, however, was finding the texts between her and another guy, arguing about how she thought he had given her the HPV that caused her cancer. The enormity of it all was suffocating. When I confronted her, she denied everything. She told me I was crazy and that maybe that's why she had denied me intimacy. I'm mild-mannered to a fault, which she hated about me she enjoyed confrontation and often used emotional outbursts to bully me when I would ask why we weren't having sex. She had always had a hard time with accountability, but this was just infuriating. I began to lay out the evidence, starting with the earliest affair. In a dismissive voice, she said, oh you knew. I did not. I then showed more evidence. She would dismiss it as if it hadn't happened, even with the evidence right there in front of her. I'd ask her if that was the extent of it. She'd say yes. Then I'd reveal more evidence and call her on her lies. This happened again and again until finally I just accepted she had no intention of coming clean or asking for forgiveness. I moved out in October 2011. Throughout our separation, she would repeatedly try to ask me to move back in by saying things that would make me feel pity for her. It feels like you're just waiting for me to die. I'm not ashamed to admit that I was. I just wanted to be reunited with my children and move on from the nightmare. I hated her and everything she had done. I didn't even bother filing for divorce I knew cancer would eventually get her. It did on November 19, 2013. She passed away ugly and slowly, still trying to cover up all her lies and deceit. I raise our two children on my own now, and we're thriving. As you can imagine however, I'm riddled with trust issues that will probably never be resolved. I haven't dated since. My daughter has my wife's old mobile phone, which she has refused to clear off as she likes to read old text conversations and keep contacts from back then. Unfortunately, this means she has come across the truth many times over regardless of how thoroughly I clear the worst of the text messages. She's 16 and understands everything that happened. We have a very solid relationship and talk openly about it all. Nevertheless, she consults a therapist regularly to help heal in ways that I can't help her with. My son knows about it all but is completely disinterested. He's 12 now and was only 4 when she passed away after all. As a policy, I will not lie to them even to protect them as I feel strongly that lies are what led us to where we're at now. I can only imagine the emotional damage if they found out as adults and from someone other than me. I've continued to bring the kids up to visit where her family lives, from, where we live, about an eight-hour drive, for the holidays and for an extended time during the summers. For the most part, they're good people who are kind and did nothing to deserve being cut off from their grandkids. My kids love them, and they have lots of cousins in their extended family who are the same ages as my kids. They go out of their way to welcome us, and I enjoy their company. The only odd part about all that is that her family has never acknowledged anything that happened. None of the cheating, none of the reasons for the split. In fact, they never even talk about any of it at all, which for a guy who likes to talk about things to resolve them, is very frustrating and uncomfortable. When we split, she begged me not to tell everyone why, but she said she'd tell her family. I was fine with it as I always viewed it as a private matter anyway. 
She then talked trash about me to the kid's friend's parents in addition to the kid's teachers, I only found this out from her text messages after she passed away. It's not clear at all to me how honest she was with her family however. Since they never acknowledge it happened, I can only assume they either don't know at all, or they know, and it's too difficult for them to talk about. I don't want to cause any pain for her family, but I would like something they have that rightfully belongs to me the rings, engagement, and wedding. It's my assumption that since her mom and her sister cleared her room when she passed away, one of them took the rings. They probably did this at her request perhaps to give them to my daughter later in life on a significant occasion. Regardless, I don't view them as ever having belonged to her because her cheating was so pervasive throughout our relationship. They only represent infidelity and they can never be as meaningful or symbolic of anything to another person as they will be to me when I get rid of them forever. I sacrificed and saved, bought them for her when we had nothing, and I thought we were in love. Had I only known. My question for this crowd is, how do you stop thinking about it all? It has been eight years since she passed away, and I go to bed at night and never fall asleep. I just rehash the arguments and conversations we had. I think about how I should have handled situations differently, how I should have stood up for myself sooner when the red flag started popping up. I do all this full well knowing there's absolutely nothing I can do about it now. I've aged 24 years in the last eight. I'm 44, but I look 64. At this rate, I won't be here to offer fatherly advice when my kids get married, maybe have kids of their own. Emotionally, I'd like to achieve a sense of closure and redemption and stop beating myself up for all my blindness during those years of torment. Wife cheated on me for an entire year with several guys. I just found out my wife has been cheating on me for the past year. I've been suspecting her of something for a few months now because she's been telling weird little white lies, she's been super protective of her phone and even when I've been having sex the past year something just feels off. Well I caught her. Her sister logged into Facebook Messenger in my phone and forgot to log out. I went through their messages and what I found disgusted me. Luckily no pictures, but the way she was talking about these guys was so disgusting to me. And it's not even just one guy from what I could see from the messages with her sister over the past year, she's had sex with at least three or four other guys, I suspect it's more though, and one of them she was seeing regularly for three months while I was gone but apparently doesn't talk to him anymore. Most recently she had sex with some dude at a hotel about two weeks ago. I called one of my good friends and he said I should try and gather my emotions and confront her once I'm ready and work through it but I don't know if I can. When I look at her I just feel empty, when she touches me and hugs me I feel an anger and resentment deep deep down inside. I literally just feel numb. She was my first serious relationship and we have been together for three years and I don't think I can do it anymore. I feel trapped in my own house. I gathered tons of screenshots and saved them somewhere she would never find them before I logged out of her sister's account. Update. So as the title states my wife was cheating on me for the past year, at least that I know of. I was going to wait until October to confront her because she is a key witness in a court case I have coming up, but it was literally eating me alive. I had called my dad and talked to him about it and he he brought up a good point. She had made a written statement under oath about what had happened already. So upon realizing that I decided it was finally time to confront her. It had only been a week since I had found out that I decided to confront her, but it was honestly one of the most uncomfortable weeks of my life. Every time I looked at her I felt angry, every smile I made towards her was forced and faked, going to bed at night with her made me feel cold and empty and worst of all having sex with her made me feel completely and utterly disgusted with myself. I had only done it like once or twice and then made an excuse every single time after that to not have sex with her. I was literally dying on the inside. The morning of the day I confronted her she actually accused me of cheating on her and all I could do was look at her and burst out into a fit of hysterical laughter because of how ironic the situation was. It did nothing to help my case but I left my house for a good 45 minutes to make some phone calls. That's when I called my father and decided now was the time. After calling my father I had decided to contact my wife's sister because back in October she had tried to get a hold of me about something important she had to tell me about my wife. Back then I had thought it was just some dumb bullcrap, because she's a notorious liar and thief, but after what I had seen I had thought that perhaps it was genuine. After contacting her she actually warned my wife. 
So my wife called me and I told her I would be home shortly to confront her. I pulled up into my driveway, slipped an audio record into my pocket and turned video recording on on my phone and put that into my breast pocket then walked inside to confront her. I was cool, calm and collected but on the inside I had no idea what to expect, this woman that I had been with for years had turned into a completely different person in the past six months. I had confronted her by saying how long have you been cheating on me, how many people have you cheated on me with and why did you do it? She tried playing dumb at first but then I started quoting things she said in messages to her sister and naming off some of the guys she had cheated on me with and her mood instantly changed and I saw that tears started to well up in her eyes. I asked her again and she refused to answer until I told her how I found it out, so I told her about how I had went through her and her sister's messages. She instantly started crying and I still don't believe half the things she told me, she said it had only been with two guys but the messages I saw suggested has at least been three or four different men, she also said she had not cheated on me since March which I called her bullcrap on because there was a message about how she met up with a guy at a hotel literally days before my birthday. Her reasoning for doing it was probably one of the worst excuses I have ever heard, she told me she was afraid of moving so far from home and did it out of weakness and her second reason was because she had not been with someone sexually prior to me. I told her those were the dumbest excuses I ever heard and that we would be getting a divorce and she broke down and started bawling her eyes out and begging me to stay and that she couldn't lose me. I didn't cry, I didn't yell at her, I didn't call her any names, I just stared at her as she cried absolutely disgusted with the woman she had become. I explained to her that there was nothing she could do, we were going to be getting a divorce and that I would let her stay at my house for one to two months while she saved money to move. That lasted for about 10 days then I told her she needed to leave because I couldn't stand the sight of her anymore and she went to her friend's house. The separation was cordial at first but then she started doing things that absolutely pissed me off. She would call my phone late into the night when she would know I would be sleeping to wake me up, she ended up developing this elaborate story that painted me as the bad guy saying that I only married her to get extra money and this was my plan all along to marry her and divorce her once she was useless to me, she showed up one time at one in the morning to fetch her things when I had been offering to bring her things to her all damn day, after that incident I changed all the locks on the house. But what pissed me off the most was she demanded me to sign over one of my two cars in a separations agreement both of which I had worked extremely had to pay cash for. She insisted she needed a car to survive, that she was entitled to a car since I had originally bought it for her that she deserved the car even though I had paid for everything the past year of the relationship and that she wasn't going to do any paperwork without me giving her the car. Out of anger I let it drag on for a few weeks before speaking with someone about it. He explained to me that losing this $2,500 car would be worth it in the long run especially since I have a sizable chunk of equity in my house that she isn't interested in and she was also willing to waive all rights to alimony and post-separation support. The only reason I didn't want to sign the car over even though it would be the financially responsible thing to do considering how much she was willing to lose for it was because I had too much emotion and anger into it and I had to take the anger out. I decided his advice was right and now we have an appointment in a few weeks to sign the separations agreement. All she is getting from me is a car and I'm getting everything else. Since leaving her I've felt a lot of different emotions. I've been extremely angry and lonely however, oddly enough I haven't missed her at all and haven't even thought about any of the good times we had the month month and a half we have been apart. My house is an absolute mess and I've been too unmotivated to clean it more than 20 minutes at a time, I spend a lot of my free time just laying in bed staring at the ceiling and walls, I got rid of all of our cats and dogs, however for the first time in a very long time I feel free again, like I can do whatever I want. Finding out she was cheating on me was just the icing on the cake, she had become verbally abusive, got into the habit of coming home drunk multiple times a week and putting her hands on me when she was drunk, hadn't helped me pay for anything for nearly a year, and became extremely irresponsible and was constantly breaking things, losing things and getting tickets that I had to pay for. So honestly, this is for the best. I'm not sure what will happen now or what I will do. Since leaving her I've hooked up with multiple women I didn't even know for fun, one of them likes me a lot now and she's a very nice and genuine girl but I have no idea what to do, went to clubs and bars for the first time, reconnected with old friends and have attempted to get my life back on track. I don't plan to get married again for a very very long time if ever, I got married too young and I've done so much growing up this year from all I've been through I sometimes feel disconnected from my peers and I don't even want a committed long term relationship for a while either.
I made an appointment to see a counselor slash therapist at the end of this month cause not only am I dealing with a divorce but I have heaps of other things going on in my life too. But I'm not sure if I need it. Edit, literally laughing at all the people that are mad at me for getting rid of my pets. I rehomed them all to other families. I made an adult decision and realized I wasn't in a position to care for them any longer. After cutting things off with my wife I no longer had the motivation, plus I had four large dogs and two cats which was too much for one person especially with as much as I work. And to add on she agreed to take one of the dogs and both cats then randomly called me one day saying she wasn't taking them anymore, thus dumping all the responsibility on me.